Hi, thanks, Siddish. So uh, my name is Anna Lee. I work uh, at Oracle as a sales consultant. What that means is I go out and I meet with customers as they're thinking about pursuing BI projects, analytics projects, and I can tell you from working in the field and engaging and talking with customers directly that there's really been a lot of excitement around BI cloud service. Not just customers who are thinking about pivoting to the cloud and, and asking us, well, what can you offer in the cloud, but just even customers who are looking at any BI tool. Uh, there's a lot that BI cloud service offers that's very attractive to them, and it, and it happens to be in the cloud. Um, so why BI Cloud Service? Why would one consider um, pivoting to the cloud? You know, Oracle in the past couple of fiscal years and, and for the fewer uh, uh, foreseeable future is really investing very heavily in a pivot to the cloud, moving a lot of functionality and capability into the cloud really to help our customers uh, be able to uh, realize a very quick time to value. So with BI Cloud Service, you can sign up you know, sign a contract and, and be provisioned with a matter of weeks. And you can imagine when you compare um, doing something that might be more on-premise where you have to order hardware, install, do all that stuff, all those steps. Cloud service, you sign up, you get provisioned, and within a few weeks you are ready to go. You have your BI in the cloud just waiting for, for you to, to start working with it. All of the capabilities for kind of a complete BI solution are, are sold together, packaged together. So what that means is you have the BI piece, the actual business intelligence piece, and then also with that you get um, a uh, what's called a database schema service. So it, it's the database portion that goes with that. So all you have to do is you sign up for one service and you get those corresponding components with that, um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, what are the different sort of dependencies that I need to get this service up and running. And BI, you know, Oracle's just ge ge generally approach to BI is really to create or enable, you know, the empowerment of the business analyst. And IT is there to help curate, to help assist, but really Oracle wants, you know, the, the, those who know the data the best to be able to really interact with the data. So BI Cloud Service, you'll see through the demonstration and also through some of the slides later, we've really designed it to be for, you know, for anyone, for any analyst to use. It's, it's, it's easy to use. The interface is very intuitive. And it can be, you know, because it is a cloud service and a subscription-based, you purchase it based on the number of users or subscribers. So it could start off as, you know, a small work group or a small department, or it could start off as an enterprise-wide solution. It's up to you as the customer to make that determination, what would meet your requirements. And again, built for user self-service. There's some exciting functionality with, with data mashup and data visualization that, that I'm going to talk about, and I, I think uh, Shidditch would also be, be um, reviewing the demonstration as well. Next slide, please. So we're, we seem to have a little problem with some of the graphics, so there might be some blank spots here. But um, so the, the BI platform, so for those of you who may or may not be aware, Shidish mentioned this with, with the Oracle acquisition of Siebel. Uh, they acquired an intellectual uh, uh, property that is, was, it was really the, the core of the, the BI product. That's what, what's now sold as Oracle Business Intelligence and a Bright Edition, or we call it OBIE for short. OBIE is our on-premise, but it's not the same as what's in the cloud, but it has sort of the same, you know, gene pool. It comes from the same gene pool. So this isn't a startup cloud uh, service, BI service that we've just, you know, kind of put together in somebody's garage. It really comes from sort of this, um, this history and experience and expertise that we've had with a BI platform that's really enterprise ready. Oracle data centers. Oracle data centers are unique in that they're the only major uh, cloud service provider out there that is uh, fully run and employed directly by Oracle. So there are no subcontractors anywhere from, you know, the people who are the DBAs to the people who are at the, the data center security guards checking IDs. They are all Oracle employees, and that is to make sure that we have a very secure environment and that everyone is accountable directly to Oracle. So we do operate those data centers with a very high uh, uh, standard and level of security. 
And it's going to be fully managed. So instead of thinking about, you know, the next uh, software patch and am I going to be on the latest software, software patch, et cetera, all that is going to be managed for you by Oracle. We have um, a target of 99.5% availability. We do have a window of time that we that we will give you notice for to say, you know, a couple weeks in advance or a week in advance that the service will be unavailable from this time this this time for upgrades and patching. And you can expect that to be at a pace of, of about once a month. It might even be less, sometimes maybe more, but that's about the average. Next slide. Again, we're missing a few graphics there, but so the, the BI cloud service, so as I mentioned, it's based on this BI technology, not quite the same as OBIE, but sort of that same intellectual property is, is, is powering the BI, BI engine. Um, and it's integrated with this database service, like I said. You just sign up for one, one service and you'll be able to get that. There are some options to get if you feel like the database schema service isn't quite robust enough. You can go and get a actual a, a slice of actual Oracle database in the cloud. That's also an option, um, and you have built-in mobility options as well. So you can have direct um, access to those same reports and dashboards from your iPad or your iPhone or your or your Android phone as well. The administration is also very simple. It's all from the same interface. That, um, again, we use a concept of roles. So if you're an administrator or not administrator, you'll have access to some of the screens in BICS. And you'll be able to add users, et cetera, um, give access, things like that. But it is a very simple uh, way to administer the, the entire instance for your organization. And again, we run on a monthly subscription basis. And, and these last two features I mentioned before is this ability to actually combine enterprise data with your own data, and we call this data mashup. So, for example, if there is, you know, the, the revenue data that's already there, it's enterprise, you know, um, kind of approved, it's curated data that's, that's in your, your BI tool, but there's, you know, one extra column, maybe, you know, some sort of uh, other marketing code that, that you'd like to join with that, uh, you'll be able to do that by adding your data to that to to that enterprise data. That's what we call data mashup, matching up that enterprise data with user provided data. And we've worked a lot on on visualization as well. This is what we call visualize uh, visual analyzer, and have another slide uh, that goes a little bit more into detail in that. But all of this is everything what you get with a uh, BI cloud service. In terms of environments, um, customers ask us a lot, you know, you know, how many instances do we get, et cetera. So with each uh, purchase or each subscription, you will get a pre-production. We call it pre-production. Some people call it test, dev, et cetera, and a production environment. So you will get, get two environments. They do have different databases. So, you, you know, one will have production data and one will have test data, so you don't have to worry about that. And it's very, very easy to migrate between the two. Um, Oracle's developed some neat sort of uh, tools here um, that help with the migration from instance to instance. And essentially like a, a compressed file, we call it a bar file, and all you have to do is move it from one environment to the other, and all the modeling and the dashboards and reports that have been uh, defined in that environment are now stood up in the, in the target environment. So it's a really a very easy way to migrate. Next slide, please. Um, so here you see some of the graphics. Um, for those of you who may have seen OBIE before, some of this may look familiar. There is some similar sort of look and feel with how you create a dashboard, how you go through and do some of the, mar uh, the, the modeling. Um, there is a lot of interactive uh, capability and features with it. There's drilling. You can build hierarchies. Um, a wide variety of different graphics. Again, people uh, are very visual, and they'd like to see data that, you know, are meaningful to them in a powerful and impactful way. And this, the visualization of data is something that our customers have, have always been very um, keen on, both for on-premise and also for cloud. Next slide, please. So speaking about the visual visualization, um, in the cloud version, we've released uh, here something called that, that's called Visual Analyzer. 
And it's almost a, a way of sort of building and playing with the data in a very visual way. So it's very uh, fluid. You can move things around very easily. Um, you can actually do things where you, where you kind of highlight, uh, say you can highlight a wedge on a pie chart, and it will automatically highlight the other related data, data on that same dashboard as well. So it's a very um, visual way of interacting with the data. Again, this is, this is the result of some of the feedback from our customers wanting, you know, more visualization, more emphasis on, on visualization of data. And again, with Visual Analyzer, you also do have the opportunity to be able to extend that enterprise data with your own data sets as well and blend that in and see it in a very rich visual format. Next slide, please. The mobile support, so this comes automatically with your subscription to BI Cloud Service. Um, it is based on um, our mobile tech, BI mobile technology that we already have out uh, and has been out uh, on the market for a few generations as well. It's native, so it's all the kind of like the touch and the, the zoom and the swipe, all of that is, is, is available uh, to your users. They're very familiar with using those kinds of movements on a mobile device, and so we, we do integrate uh, directly with that. And we support both the, the Android platforms and the iOS platforms as well for the mobile support. Next slide, please. So we get often a lot of questions about the data. And sometimes it'll depend on who's in the, the audience, those who, who are you know, sort of more techy and those who are less. But just to help explain and, and where the data is, is residing. So the data for BICS does have to reside in the cloud for now. Um, on our roadmap, uh, which I'll get to in a slide or two, we do intend on being able to have um, database, on-premise database queries. So you'll be able to actually not have to move data to the cloud, but your data will be residing in the cloud, and there are several ways that you can get the data into the cloud. We try to really provide a, a range of different ways so that customers can figure out what seems to make sense for them. So the first option is the data loader. This is actually done directly in the in the BI Cloud Service interface. So you could be an end user, and if you have the right to to add data or load data up, you just upload an Excel file, and you you know kind of go to click through like a little wizard, and it'll load that data right up uh, into the cloud, and then it's part of your instance. We also have a REST API uh, available for those who for those customers who might want to define and write a custom interface. And in fact, Oracle's actually created a little widget that we call DataSync that uses this REST API. And what this DataSync tool does is it helps manage um, kind of incremental loads and things like that as customers sort of roll out into production and you want to be able to, to load your data on a regular basis into the ICS. And we have this little DataSync utility that we wrote and we provide to our customers that helps assist you with that. But if there's something else that you wanted to do, we do have that API available. And then finally, we have SQL Developer. So if you wanted to use it as a cart function where you can load things up using SQL Developer, you can do that as well. So there are several different ways that you can get at, um, figure out the best way for you to, to load data into the ICS. Next slide, please. So what, what's kind of the, the end, end result of all of this is, is the end result is to create a BI platform that is uh, quick and easy for customers to get up on running, uh, get up on and running with um, so, so that you as customers can focus on what's important, that you can focus on the business value that you can get out of having strong analytics and dashboarding tools available at your fingertips. So you get your data in, this just walks through it. You load your data. I've talked about the different ways you can get your data into the ICS. You organize it. There's some modeling, invo modeling involved. You can add security, who can see what, et cetera, things like that. You create reports off of that, and then you use, you go ahead and you're off and running, and you can use it. You can share it on your mobile device, access it on your mobile device, device et cetera. So again, this is really the idea is that we provide this platform to really help our customers get to that end point, which is this number four, use, share, and distribute as fast as possible. Next slide, please. 
So I wanted to talk very briefly a little bit about um, the roadmap. So as you can see from this timeline, uh, the ICS has a very uh, fast pace of development. We've been putting a lot of functional functionality out every few months. Um, and Oracle's adopted a cloud-first approach, meaning that we're developing and deploying into the cloud, the BI cloud, before we deploy into our BI on-premise. And the reason for that is primarily logistical, if you think about it, is that in our cloud environment, we have every, we know all the variables. It's all, you know, under control, all under Oracle control, whereas when we're developing things for on-premise, we have to think about all the myriad of, of permutations of uh, permutations that our customers might have in terms of their environment. So we're actually just able to deploy faster to the cloud because we control the environment. And so you'll see a lot of uh, features and functionality come out of the cloud first. So for example, if you look at the release from May, this visual analyzer and, and data, data mashup, that is also going to be in an on-premise version, but we released it first to the cloud because we could and it was ready to go. Um, so looking of, looking ahead at some of the things that, that are coming in, in, the, in future releases, um, uh, in July, so hopefully in, we're already midway through July, but plan for before the end of July, we'll be able to support Exadata service so for those customers who, who want to who wanna be able to run their database on Exadata. Um, our schema database will, will offer a 250 gigabyte option for schema map viewer and some data enrichment uh, support. Looking forward ahead, I think um, there are a lot of customers who are very excited about being able to support S-based service. Uh, that's coming later in, in this calendar year. And I mentioned the on-premise query, so being able to query your on-premise data without moving it to the cloud first. So those are some highlights of some of the things that are on, on our roadmap and, and have a date associated to them. If there are any other questions about future direction, I may have some information about things that are being considered for roadmap, but just might not be attached to a date or a release just yet. Mm -hmm.